I welcome you all in this next video on a stress equations for knuckle joint. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the failure of fork. So remember that as we have seen in case of failure of eye, so I was failed under tensile stress and shear stress. Similarly, this fork will also fail in the tensile stress or shear stress. So first of all, let us consider, let us consider the tensile failure of fork. Tensile failure of fork and let us consider the diagram of fork. So as we have seen in the introductory lecture, so this is a fork of I, uh, this is the fork of knuckle joint and in the free body diagram we have seen that this fork is subjected to a force P on the LHS and force force P by 2 on RHS as this fork has two ends which are similar to which has similar feature like a hollow cylinder so this force P on the LHS which is applied on the LHS that should be balanced by the force applied on these two fork ends so that's why here uh, you can see the force p by 2 and force p by 2 at each end of fork so this is the top end of fork and this is the bottom end of fork which is subjected to force p by 2 each now let us look at the dimensions so this this dimension that is the thickness of fork end is small a Similarly, this thickness of fork end is small a. Then this outer diameter, this outer diameter of both the fork end is do, and this inner diameter, this inner diameter of both the fork end is d. So as we have seen in the introductory lecture, so do is the outer diameter of this fork end, which is same as that of uh, outer diameter of i. So outer diameter is same for both fork and I and inner diameter is small d which is same for both fork and I. So uh, now first let us consider the tensile failure of I. So as we have seen uh, the tensile failure occurs or any type of failure occurs at the uh, weaker section. So weak section is at this region. So in this region there is a weak section in this fork end as these two are nothing but the hollow cylinder as like uh, in I. So these are the hollow cylinder portions of this fork and this is the weak section of this fork end. So if the at all the tensile failure occurs, this tensile failure will occur at these two sections. So let us draw the diagram of a fork after a tensile failure. So as we discussed this uh, tensile failure, if it occurs then it will occur at this weak section which is shown here. So this is the diagram of uh, this fork end after tensile failure. So this half portion of this top end will get removed like this and this half portion of this bottom end of fork will get removed like this under tensile failure. So this is the area which is subjected to tensile stress for top end of fork and this is the area subjected to tensile stress for a bottom end of fork. If we talk about if we talk about these uh, dimensions that is this height then this height is equal to thickness of this fork end that is small a then similarly the thickness of this bottom end of fork is also small a then uh, as you can see after failure you can see these two rectangular areas are areas subjected to tensile stress. So we have to find out if we want to find out this area of this rectangle, we must know that height and this width. So this width is equal to the thickness of this, the thickness of this fork end, which is like a hollow cylinder. So this thickness, this thickness is nothing but this width of this rectangle similarly same width we can take for this rectangle same width we can take for this rectangle because this distance is basically the thickness of this hollow cylinder type of fork end that is this width of rectangle is nothing but the thickness of this hollow cylinder 
hollow cylindrical type of fork head so uh, we can write here so we can write here the this width of rectangle as the thickness of this hollow cylindrical type of fork head and this thickness of hollow cylindrical type of fork head is equal to outer diameter do that is this outer diameter do minus inner diameter d upon 2 in this way we can get this thickness that means this dimension is equal to do minus d upon 2 so we can write here this dimension is equal to do minus d upon 2 same we can write for this width that is thickness of this fork end is equal to do minus d upon 2 so this width of rectangle we have calculated obtained as do minus d upon 2 same width we can take here do minus d upon 2 that is this outer diameter do minus this inner diameter d upon 2 we get the width of single rectangle same width we can refer here so this uh, width of this rectangle area is uh, do minus d upon 2 and this width is again same so do minus d upon 2 so total four rectangular areas we have to consider so this is the first one this is second one this is third one and this is fourth one so these are the four rectangular areas which are subjected to tensile stress so first of all we have to write the equation of area so let us write a is equal to area subjected to tensile stress so let us better write here total area subjected to tensile stress so total area is equal to areas of these four rectangles so we can write uh, we will write the equation of only one rectangle area and we will multiply by 4 so 4 into area of rectangle because this is the first rectangular area this is the second rectangular area this is the third rectangular area and this is the fourth rectangular area which is subjected to tensile stress so 4 into we will write the area of this rectangle so its height is a into width is do minus d upon 2 if you simplify this here you can get here 2 so twice a into do minus d upon 2 so this is the total area of this fork which is subjected to tensile stress and now let us write the equation of tensile stress so tensile stress in fork which is denoted by sigma t is given as sigma t is equal to p upon a and area we have just derived it is 2a do minus d so this is the equation of tensile stress in the fork end so this is the equation of tensile stress in fork end so similarly we can derive the equation of shear stress in the fork